Oh my goodness, it's been so long since I did this. Hi. I'm just getting a snack. It's not better. Mm. Hi. How have I been? Huh? I'm sure we'll get to that. How are you? I think you're the only one on here right now. Bye bye. I'm just eating something quickly because I, have, yeah, I haven't done that yet. I haven't done this in so long. I'm like, how does this work? Hi, hi Dylan. I'm Mad Mikey04, glad to see you. Thanks for coming on. I made these things last night. They're like these little protein oat balls. And um, I didn't try them last night. I'm only trying them now. They're good. Yeah. So it's like oats and dates and almonds and chia seeds and uh, protein powder. I like things that I can just put in a blender and it will make food. Thank you. Yes, they are comfy. I thought about should I wear comfy pants or should I wear like... <laughs> should I look presentable? I also look like I've been crying, but I haven't. They're just eye drops. Hi. Hi, Mars. Delia to Jack. Hi. How are you? I'm having my coffee. And my new latest thing is like, I put collagen powder in my coffee and then I put creamer, which is crazy. Because I don't, I've, I've, I've been like a black coffee girl since I, I started drinking coffee. At first this said 11 p.m. I know, I, um, yeah. You know, I got the AM and PM wrong. Have you been doing any television projects lately? Yeah, I did something back in the fall. I was doing something. Um, there was a big strike. I don't know if you guys know about that. There was a big actor strike and SAG strike and writer strike. And everyone was striking. Um, but it's over now. So we'll see. Um, yeah, I think like the projects that were going at the time, everyone kind of has to get back into it. Hello, Diamond, Diamond Artist. Hello, darling. Oh, you're so sweet. I can't believe how nice you guys all are. You're so, everyone, everyone. How am I? I'm good. I'm good. I'm feeling really good. Um, yeah. There's just like new. I just feel excited again to make things. To put things out there. To do things. And I guess that wasn't there for a while. You only really know where you've been when you're someplace new. So yeah, I'm feeling really, like probably a lot lighter and um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking of like, there's this Mark Zuckerberg interview I watched. I don't think anything about Mark and Mark Zuckerberg, Mark. Yeah, we're on a first name basis. I don't think anything about him, whatever. It was just like an interview and they were asking him, um, what he thought about the social network and he's kind of going into like how they made this whole thing about 
Erica, the girl who like spurned him and that that was like the motivation for Facebook and for everything that unfolded. And he's like, people couldn't just get that I just really liked making things. Uh, which I guess isn't very cinematic, I don't know. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm thinking of that, I was thinking of that last night, that like, it's exciting when you start making things. It's just enjoyable. So I'm starting to see all these like possibilities for things I could make and put out there. Because I actually, I have, it's, it's like a blessing and a curse, but I have so many interests, so many. And I want to do all of them and I don't have the time. And it's not just like the time to do them. It's the time to get well at them, like to get decently skilled at them that I honestly feel like they're worth sharing. And maybe I worry too much about that. Like when it's not really for me to determine or decide what's worth sharing or not. But I do just believe that if you're going to do something, do it to the absolute best of your ability. So, so there's a lot of things I want to be good at. Um, being good at something is one of the best feelings in the world. You know, being able to like pull something off, carry something off, carry something out. Anyway, so what are you guys all saying? Yeah, let's, um, Let's not do the Far Cry stuff today. Hi, Matthew. Hi, Lenny. Explosive swine. <laughs> I heard he made Facebook to rank and compare women at his college. Um, I don't. I don't know. I've only seen the face, the social network. I don't know. Again, I think like. A lot of things, like most things, you start making something kind of like for fun, kind of as like, just a, you're just messing around. And then from that, you start like getting more and more ideas. Like your first idea is rarely what it becomes. So maybe he was ranking women, but I think that was probably only because it was inspired by something that already existed. I think that already existed. At least he shows that in the movie. Hi, Snarly Fox. Hi. Are there any books I've been reading lately? I haven't been reading much. I mean, I have this like bookshelf of books beside me. I should start reading because, um, you know, we watch so many videos now. I feel like that's the way we take in so much now is just like watching videos, but um, I do have books I want to get to. Yeah, I'm, I was reading this the most recently, which maybe is a chick flick book type, but I try not to categorize books like that. Um, I've been watching The Crown lately. That's probably like, you know, podcasts. Share what's on your mind. Okay, I will. I'll get to it. Hello there, Maddie. Hi. What's on my mind? What's on my mind, my, 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 my mind? Um, yeah. I guess I just want to like talk a little bit about why I left, why I'm back, because I didn't have to come back. And sometimes I thought maybe I won't. Um, I will just say that like, it's really easy in some ways to keep doing the things you do. Like once you set a pattern for yourself, whatever the pattern is, like running five miles every single day, once that's like really a pattern, um, the easiest thing is to keep doing it. And I guess like I, so I'm, I'm good at that. I'm good at like creating a kind of routine for myself. And once I get into the routine, I can carry it out. The thing is like, then what happens for me is I start, um, or at least what was happening for me and used to happen for me is like, I would doubt 
my intentions, I guess. That's probably the best way to put it. It was like not really trusting myself and that like I was really doing the right things for myself. So I'd be kind of on this track and I would just be doubting where it was coming from. Um, and I don't, I don't know if it's right to like step away or if it's right to just move through it. You know, if it was a marriage or a relationship, should you stay with the person and like have the fights and work it out? Or should you maybe separate for a while and figure yourselves out and then come back? I don't know. I decided to step away. I guess that's like what I often do is I step away and I try to get myself in a good place before I come back. Um, so what was happening for me with the channel? And I guess I was thinking about it this morning where I was like, I was like slipping away. Like I, I started just doing the lives because that's what it seemed like people wanted the most. Um, they kind of just like wanted to hang out with me and I was like, okay, I'll do that. So I think for a while I was just really doing the lives. Um, and I was kind of feeling discouraged about yeah that like I wasn't I guess I wasn't like clear enough I wasn't having like enough of an impact with what I was doing um and I wondered if like I didn't have the right uh authority not that not that like I need the authority, but that like for myself, I wasn't like owning the things I wanted to talk about enough that they could be like um, communicated properly in a way that made people trust me and listen to me. Um, that I wasn't like owning that. And so it was my own fault. And so maybe I needed to step away and find that. So that then if I really wanted to keep doing this channel, I could do it from a more secure, more confident, just like an easier, an easier place, an easier place where I didn't feel as much of a fraud. Uh, yeah. And I don't even know how long the break has been. If I think of it, I don't want to think about it, but, uh, it probably took a lot longer <laughs> than I expect it. Yeah, it did. It took a lot longer than I, than it expected than I expected it to. And I don't know if I have it now. Um, I like, you know, it's interesting to go back and look at your channel and be like, what was I doing? Like, <laughs> because I just, I didn't touch it for so long and like going back to my channel now and like the opening video that I have on my, my like homepage for YouTube. My voice is so small. My voice is like this, do you know what I mean? It's like this little girl's small voice and it's really kind and it's really gentle and it's very me in some ways, but it does seem like, like apologetic in some way or, or something. Maybe you guys disagree. Um, that there's like an unwillingness to kind of just be a person be someone with some like substantiality so anyway um I'm back I won't say that like I figured everything out but again with this idea of like I just want to make things and I just want to I just want to like share everything I have I guess everything I have and not be the judge of whether it's useful or not because because maybe it's not about like functionality all the time maybe it can just be like i'm a person and i have value and i will just show up and whatever i feel like talking about whatever i feel is on my mind that day i'm just gonna like trust it and like not give it so much gravitas not like not predetermine whether it's valuable or not. And let you guys just be yourselves too, you know? <laughs> I 
<laughs> it's a very gentle voice. Thank you. I do tend to, um, well, I don't know. I'm not in other people's minds and other people's bodies, so I think that I overanalyze myself a little bit. Um, but sometimes I'm talking, I'm like, why am I talking like this? What, what is this like? Why do I do that? And I, I, I think it's like very non-threatening and kind of unassuming and soft, soft. I think I'm in general trying to be reassuring and soothing. And not like loud and overbearing. Actually see. Hi. Yeah, so I'm back and I'm there's like so much there's so many places on the internet for one to be and go. Uh but maybe I'll just kind of like spew some of the ideas that are like coming at me. So I do think like I want to I want to start doing videos again because I actually really liked it. I really really liked the editing process. It was just fun. Um you know, I, I don't know about the content itself and I might go back and I might just like delete YouTube videos I no longer agree with at this point in time. I might do that. Uh, I might start, like I could start from scratch. I could do that and I might be more, um, I'm not sure. I might be more deliberate about what, what the videos are. I don't think I'm the kind of person that like scripts myself, but uh, I might, <laughs> I might make it more. I I really don't want to do the like the list kind of videos. Maybe that's what everyone wants, but I don't actually think it's helpful. You know those videos that are like ten ways to glow up in twenty twenty four. And then like there's a checklist of things and it's like, do this, do that, do this. Like I don't think anyone ever writes down the checklist and then like goes and does the checklist. I think they take the points that they think are interesting and they leave the rest. So I guess it's just like an organizational way of putting ideas out there. But uh, anyway, I <laughs> I don't think I want to do the list thing, but uh, I might want to, I want to start writing, I guess, and blogging. And so I might like write about a topic and then having done that, then create a video from it because it'll be more like solid in my mind having written it. Um, yeah, I, uh... <laughs> hi bestie. So I want to start writing again. Like, where should I write? Where would you guys like to, where, where should I put writing out there? I don't know. There's so many possibilities. And I mean, like I could even just like write on here with like posts on YouTube. But, like you can write anywhere. I can write on Reddit. I can write on like, but I'm trying to figure that out. And um, I also want to make like, I want to make digital products. So I did that. I created a digital journal because one of the things that I was doing over the summer is I was just like journaling a lot and asking myself like really uncomfortable hard questions. It was kind of inspired by like by shadow work if you guys know what that is. It was inspired by that but I kind of let my mind run amok and I just I was writing 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 all summer. Um and just really trying to get like really, really honest with myself, whether the answer was like nice or comfortable or good or not, I was just writing the answer. Um, and it was really scary, but like really, really freeing, like really, really releasing. I felt so good by the end of the summer. I felt so free, so free. I was just so comfortable with like, with everything, with like good and bad. I was so comfortable. Um, and uh, so yeah, so I created a digital journal full of questions like that. 
and I put that, I created a link tree and I put that on my link tree. So if you guys want to purchase that, you can. Um, and if you're curious about that, just like shoot me a message or something and I'm free to like share some examples from it or like, I don't know, talk to you more about that. But then, yeah, I was like thinking about digital products I could make uh, from like my experiences as an actor because I actually think that there's a lot of, when you start, when you start like teaching stuff, you're like, oh, everyone else that I was listening to for so long was just like teaching what made sense for them. It doesn't mean that like that's the way that's right. Um, so, so I kind of like started, um, looking at like what, how I would like help someone get better as an actor. And it was like, oh, I actually, there's a lot of things like I wouldn't teach that I think people emphasize that it just gets, it makes people confused and scared and self-conscious. And that's like the opposite of what you want as an actor. Like you really, really just want to be like accessing people's innate sense of like what it is to be a human. That's all you're trying to do. It's like, hey, you know how to be a human. You know what it's like being alive in a body and having a conversation with someone. You know what that's like. You know what it's like to flirt with someone. You know what it's like to get angry with someone. You know what it's like to do this. But like for some reason, when we're like acting and performing, we throw all that out the window, or at least some people do. We go like, no, my what I do isn't right. What it's actually like isn't right. It has to be something else because this is for TV or this is for film or this is for TikTok or this is for like, and th and it's like, no, no, like people should think that's just you having an argument. People shouldn't know you're acting. And I know that people say that, I've heard that before, but there's, there's things, you have to express it in such a way that again, it's not just like, oh, wise note, thank you, thank you. Yes, I will go and do the thing that you have told me to do. Like it has to be like a really like practical, this is how you tie your shoelace. It has to not be like, no, don't tell me you understand if you really don't understand. If you can't tie the shoelace, then you don't understand. So yeah, I wanna, I wanna put out some stuff that could possibly help people with acting, but also like might just help me. Might like just like clear the clutter in my head about what it is I do and how it is I do it. What's my link tree? Uh, it's my name. So. Janessa Grant. Substack. Yeah, is Substack good? I mean, I did I did just like sign up. I guess it seems very um I don't know what's the right word. I don't like the color orange. So that's what's wrong with it. I like when things come naturally. It's more human rather than having a script. Yeah, I know. Like, I feel like I just want to listen to people talking. I just want to, like, listen in on people's conversations. I learn the most from that. I learn the most when, like, people aren't trying to be smart. When they're just actually, like... You can really tell if someone really knows their stuff if they can go wildly off script. And actually, that's one of the tells that I have for, like, experts. Because sometimes I'll get really into... Um, a particular person and I'll just want to watch like all of their all of their interviews all of their podcasts and if I find that every interview is the same suddenly that person is diminished in my eyes because I'm like they can't just like speak off the cuff about this they can't like deviate they can't they can't go and talk about like what they had for lunch and somehow bring that back to the thing like they're just repeating themselves over and over and over which to me is like a lack of fluency with the with the actual material I do still, ha <laughs> I do, where's Brian? I do still have the lamp. Um, I know I need to clean up my room. Do you see like, do you see this? This is my, this is my skincare. And maybe that's like very normal, but um, that's not even all of it. <laughs> I don't, so like, yeah, I took down the website because again, it just like wasn't, I, I don't know. I was trying to like imitate other people. I was trying to be something else. And I think like at my heart, I'm, I'm more of like an artist than a like, I don't know. 
you know those like coaches on YouTube I think I'm more of an artist I don't know what that is but it's like I just want to like be a person with other people and if that helps them sort themselves out great but um I don't want to position myself like that you do what's your skincare routine I've minimized it um I do a vitamin C <laughs> I've tried minimizing it um how many steps do I have in the morning I do vitamin C azelaic acid I do snail mucin I do um what else do I do an eye cream and then I do a sunscreen that's like pretty moisturizing okay so that's like five that's not that bad Th that's doable and then at night I don't do vitamin C so it's even less at night but I do a cream instead of a sunscreen Hi, Casey. Worst acting advice. Ooh, what a good question that someone has said directly to you. It's like, it's the vague acting advice. Or it's the stuff that's like... The, the like, most important thing is, again, like, if you're, if you're, like, caught in your head trying to, like... For me, it's, like, what's really not, like, not where you want to be as an actor is like sorry this is like bugging me but I scratch myself with my nail um sometimes you'll find yourself like with an idea of what the scene is supposed to be in your head and you're doing the scene and you're like reaching for this and and everything that you're doing you're like oh, it shouldn't be like that it should be like how Emma Stone would do it or whatever it is you know you have some idea of what it's supposed to be and you're you're like I don't you know, trying to like mime that thing over there. Um, and so the worst advice is like when someone kind of makes you even more self-conscious and like makes you feel even more like what you're doing really isn't good. Like what you're doing really isn't good or like what the scene is, you need to be more over there. And I think, yeah, the medicine for that is like, Okay, like drop your idea just like get rid of that get rid of that like just drop down drop down into like anything else just drop down into yourself basically drop down into like just somehow you need to like clear that and um and get real like something that's helped me is when I find myself going to that place I think of windshield wipers and uh, and I'm like clearing the bullshit. <laughs> I'm just clearing the bullshit. I'm clearing the bullshit. I'm clearing the bullshit. Um, so that's not like specific. I can't think of off the top of my head the worst acting advice. But whenever someone makes you feel bad and self conscious and not enough and like, I just think that that kills any creativity. And people think they're helping and they're just they're just making you scared. <sighs> Hyaluron acid and retinol at night help. Yeah, I was, uh, what kind of retinol do you use? I'm curious. Hi, Mateus. Adam Whitehouse. It's been a while, but good to have you. Hello. Um, what really, I wanna know. How's your skin? Hyaluronic acid. I don't use a hyaluronic acid because I've heard that it's pretty much in everything anyway. So I've never really done a hyaluronic acid serum. Like that's what all the dermatologists say is you don't really need one, but you say it helps you. It helps you, so. Um, La Roche, it is nice. Do you mean their retinol? La Roche Posay.
Is there anything else to talk about? I don't know. Acting sounds scary. It's not though, or it shouldn't be. Like, that's what I mean, is you think it's scary when it's like, we do it as kids. Like, it comes so naturally to us, actually. We do it as children. It's not scary. But again, it's like all these things of like, it has to be something. And we watch all these movies and these shows and we go, and I mean, it's nice. Like, it's good to admire people. And it's good to appreciate their work, but it shouldn't scare you. It shouldn't intimidate you. It should inspire you, hopefully. So maybe that's partly why it's scary, is it's like, it has to be, it has to be Claire Foy, and it has to be, I have to do that thing that she does that, that I like so much. I, it has to be that. And this is like any art form. It has to be that, otherwise. And it's like, no, that's just what she does. And actually what makes her so exceptional is like that somehow she's tapped into like something that is like both really honest and a complete fabrication at the same time. Like she's not the Queen of England, but you believe she is because it's so natural in a way. Like she, it's so dropped down into her in her eyes it's just like I just feel like Claire Foy to me is the best eye actor there there ever was she just she just lets everything speak from her eyes and what does that mean like she lets it just means that so much of it is like not overcompensating because because like not everything needs to be big and dramatic and if if you find yourself just like be how you would be in real life just be how you would be in real life and in real life if you were like acting you would only be doing that because you'd be like because you would be acting for them so I don't know Yeah, so you just can't be thinking about, like, am I being impressive or not? Am I, am I, am I performing with enough excitement and intensity? And you can't be thinking that because you're not thinking that in real life, except, like, for the times when you're being really fake. Self-confidence is key. Yeah, it's like, to me, it's a lot about self, it's like self-trust, like, thinking you're, you're interesting enough. That's something that's like really come to me recently is like, what if I'm just interesting enough? Like, what if this is, what if this really is good enough? And, um, and it's not like me attaining that over there. Like, oh, once I'm that, you know, like, once I'm that kind of girl, then I'll be worthy of being watched. It's like, what if I bring it to me and I just decide like, no, this is worth watching. No, this is like, this is actually what the scene is. And I'm going to bring them to me, to like my point of view, as opposed to trying to reach something that I don't even know is the thing they're looking for. I'm just making an assumption that that's actually what they want. No, <laughs> you personally overthink shit, Lo. Everyone I have ever known, no, no, a lot of people have said that to me. I hate that expression, you overthink things. It's not helpful. Um, I don't think it's that you overthink. You're just like, you over worry. You second guess. That's what it is, you second guess. Um, um, that's actually like a byproduct. It's not something you're like intentionally doing. Therefore, it's almost more like a symptom. It's a byproduct of like not feeling whole and complete and enough. That's all it is. 
Because once you have that, there isn't the need to second guess yourself. You know what I mean? You would only second, like, if you think about, if it were someone else, imagine like yourself is someone else. It's like your boss or something. Um, you would second guess your boss if you didn't trust them. If you thought, if your boss was Michael Scott <laughs> or like someone that you, that you didn't think very highly of, you would second guess their choices and their directives and their like motivations or their, you would, you would like question everything they do because like you don't trust them. You don't have confidence in them. Um, and it would just kind of happen because you would just like, you didn't respect them. You didn't, you didn't like, you didn't think they had it. You think they're wrong. So if you, so it's that for yourself is there's like a boss inside of you and you're like, mm, I don't know about this boss. I don't know about him, her. I don't, I don't. And you're trying to protect yourself because you're afraid the boss is going to lead you astray. Confidence to me is kind of like an inner, I actually think confidence is just like inner peace. It's just, it's like trust and peace. Like you can, you can be confident and still deal with stress and still like not like certain things, but you're just, I don't know. You have faith in yourself and you have faith in the world or your ability or other people's ability. You have to ask yourself, so like Martin, impressing others, it's doing what you think works for you and then whatever. Yes, exactly. You have to ask yourself, like, why do you think you need to impress these people? Like that's coming from a place again. You know, it's like if we're, if I'm like, if I'm great, why do I need to impress them? What do I think will that I'll, what do I think I'll get if I impress them? And usually, like, if we kind of have to, at least this is the case for me, like, if I have to, like, reach for them, like, if I have to, like, do something miraculous in order um, to feel good about myself, like, it's too, it's unbalanced. I shouldn't have to, to do, like, extraordinary things with everyone. Like, I don't know, I shouldn't have to be great in order to feel good about myself. I, sh I should just be able to like, just be, I shouldn't have to compensate, overcompensate. I shouldn't have to impress, like why do people need to be impressed by me? Why is that a thing I need? Oh, but, oh, she's so impressive. Why, why do I need that? They don't have to be anything towards me, really. Are you wish Actually, yeah, Michael's, hmm. I would love him as my boss. But I would love him, like, as my boss in, like, season five, let's be honest. <laughs> Always remember the smartest to the popularest to the richest person. Puts the pants on one leg at a time. Yeah! And I think also, like, um, we see them, like, from our perspective like wow that person's so amazing but you have to think like how are they to themselves like how does Maggie Smith wake up I don't think she wakes up and she's like I'm so amazing um I really hope she does I'm so amazing I, <laughs> maybe she does but I don't think I think she just like gets on with her work and she lives her life and um and She's not, yeah, she's not doing it to impress people. I think she's doing her job and she's doing what seems right to her. And you keep doing that, it has a snowball effect. And you just start, like, people respond to that. I think it's, like, the number one thing that people respond to is just when you start treating yourself like you know what you're doing and this is, this, this is, like, where it's at. This is the thing. 
And people are like, oh, that's, that's, that's the thing. We want that. We want that. And I don't know, call that authenticity if you want, but it's kind of just like, it's, it's reassuring. It's reassuring when someone else is just like really, they just know. They're just secure. It's so nice. <sighs> you can't please everyone. Who you will always have those yourself and the ones who care. Yeah. I should probably do them. Maybe that's what I'll do for the first, for like a YouTube video is pleasing everyone. Um, I've been a chronic people pleaser, people fixer. And, uh, yeah, it just, it comes from fear. It's like, it's, I think, one of the worst um, traits to have. I don't know if it's a trait. It's just, it's just coming from fear. It's so much fear. It's so much just trying to manage what isn't yours to manage and trying to protect yourself where you don't actually need to. <sighs> you don't need to protect yourself that much. Um... Because like, because it doesn't, it won't actually hurt you. Most of the time it won't hurt you. And you're just hurting yourself more by like, by trying. If someone is trying to bully you, then you're doing something right. Oh. Oponopono. I don't do that enough. I should. I was doing that a little while back. Like, um, to myself, really. And I think that's, I think often we don't even know, like, how much we're holding on to, like, self-resentment or blame, or guilt, or shame. Like, how much if we just really, really accept ourselves for like everything we've done? Like really, really just offer like love and forgiveness despite everything. So, so much just like can happen and can come from just that. It's so simple. And I think often we don't, like, we don't know what we're holding on to. We, because we just think it's normal. Or we think it's right. We think it's justified. Like, we're trying really hard to justify staying where we are. Staying mad or angry or disappointed. Um, and that's okay. But... Like, can you love that too? Can you accept that too? I think that prayer is amazing. <sighs> and it can work like you can, you can do it for someone else and you'll actually find like, it tends to come back to yourself, I think. Um, resentment towards someone else. You can start off by doing it like that or like you can do it to like God or like the universe or, and it tends to come back to you. Uh, mainly to protect me and how I'm perceived. Yeah. I get it. I mean, people pleasing, it's like, so the part of you that does that is like really, really smart, first of all. Such a hard worker. Such a hard worker. You're like, okay. I need to protect this, this person. And other people are very threatening to that. So I'm gonna make sure they like this person. I'm gonna make sure that they're happy so that she gets to stay safe. Like, what a, what a job for that, for that part of you to undertake. I'm gonna make sure 
everyone is always happy so they don't lash out so they so they don't get angry so they don't do anything to hurt this like that's that's a job that is um but maybe it's a job that doesn't actually need doing and you'll have more energy and resources to do like really good for things for this person if you're not always doing that you know maybe there's other things that would actually make you safer make you more protected more happy more fulfilled than doing that and maybe the people that are upset want to be upset and you can't always be putting out the fire for them you don't need to that's their job Moving on is such a hard thing to do. <sighs> yeah, I'd agree with that. I really didn't want to agree with that, that like letting go without dealing with them emotionally and mentally just comes back to me later. Um, I really didn't want to believe that. I don't think it's always true, but I think like when you just kind of, when you accept, when you get to like a neutral, about the thing that's what you want to do like a piece what you have to like find a piece about it first which I think is what I was doing with journaling over the summer is I was just like I just got to a place where like all the horrible 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 things that I've been holding on to I just like got peaceful about them and neutral about them and then from there like that's the letting go basically that's that's what letting go is is getting to neutral like is like imagine that you have this like claw on it and you just need to like loosen it that's the like we've already let go even if it hasn't dropped yet we've let go and then it allows room for like other things to come in and then you can move on to those things because you're not holding anymore Oh, you still listen to my video. That's so nice. See, I didn't even know if anyone played that. That's so nice. You're so welcome, Casey. That's really nice. Yeah. Fly by. I just say, like, don't. Um, I don't know. You can get it. Sometimes like you can get angry at yourself and be like, I don't, don't stay in the self pity. Some that works. That does work. Um, but like, again, you do things for a reason. Like you do. You're really, really trying to keep this little person alive. And, um, and, th and sometimes that's where the self-pity is coming from, is like, and I don't, it can be a whole like, right? But, but meaning that like, you're doing it for a reason. Like, you're not stupid, you're not bad. There's like, there's a logical explanation for it. And it's coming from a good place. It's coming from survival. It's coming from like, from self-love. I know that sounds weird, but it's coming from self-love. You love yourself so much that you think you need this. Um, so if you can recognize that again with the letting go, what I, I just say that because like having been someone who was like, um, you know, like so afraid of like self victimhood or self pity, if you're so afraid of it, that's like, that's the claw. And so if you can get neutral about the self pity and be like, yeah, there I go again. <laughs> um, and it's not like a thing for you then you can move on. Then, like, you really, really can move on. Yeah, I'm going to stream every week now. Um, I don't know if it'll be this day. I think I used to stream at night. I wanted to try, like, a Saturday morning vibe. 
Um, but we'll see. But yeah, I'm going to stream every week. And hopefully I'm going to start filming videos again uh, this week. I think maybe doing like a video a week. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of, and yeah, writing as well. Is there anything that you would like me to do a video about or write about? We might, you know, like I go on TikTok and I watch those, those like live concert streams and I'd have to get a mic or something. And I'm so like, I get so gushy about it. I just think people are so talented so talented but maybe it's like maybe I could do it too maybe I really could maybe I'm just not seeing myself in that way we can't control how long hmm yeah I think we can't control how long we hold on to things for I think bringing time into it, I don't know, the way that you phrased it means like there's some kind of insistence, like I have to let this go. And that's what I'm trying to like convey is that letting go isn't like, <laughs> um, if you're, if you're like needing to get rid of it, that's antithesis to letting go. It's, it's only when you're like, you know what, I'm okay with this. That's the letting go. This, is this a paradox? The letting go is the not needing to let it go. That's, that's what letting go actually is. Is like not minding it. Being neutral. Being just like okay with that's letting go. That's what like we, I think we have the wrong idea of what letting go is. Letting go is just like, uh, that's it. It's just release. It doesn't mean that it's gone. It just means that like, it doesn't um, have like power over us. That's what it means. So I don't know about like, oh, we can't control how long it takes. I think sometimes just like, yes, time can be like a bomb for that. But I do think there's things that we can do to just get okay with the thing. And I think sometimes we avoid doing that because it's so, because we're so triggered by it, it's so painful to us still. But if you don't, like if you have a tight muscle and you're just like, I don't ever wanna touch that muscle. I don't ever wanna work out that muscle because it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. It's gonna just keep hurting until like finally some, something forces us to look at it. But you can also just like attend to it right away. And yes, it might hurt, but it will soften, it will soften, it will soften. It will. But it might, you might have to press on the pain point, you know? Hi, Akos. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. No, I'm not retired from acting. I'd love to do more voice work. Um, no, I'm not. Also, digital versus paper journaling, which do you think is better? So I've, I mean, don't overthink it. I think, I personally think the whole like journal space um, is very, uh, sometimes we get into like, oh, it has to be this journal and this pen and like we wanna make it very aesthetic, but like it's actually more important what you write uh, and that you just do it. So make it enjoyable for you. Um, I've done, I've personally done digital journals in the past. Um, and it's just as helpful, you know, and if you wanted to print it out, you could. I think whatever, whatever just, makes you want to do it more. I think it's more important, like, the content, 
don't get so wrapped up in the medium. I might make like, I might look into the space of like actual physical um, books or things like that for myself. Uh, but yeah, I think just like make something work for you. Whether we in society tell people to go to therapists too often. Interesting. That's like such a 180. Everyone goes to therapy now. Um, I, I don't think it's necessary. I think you can get stuck in therapy. I also think that like therapists aren't perfect. They're, they have blind spots. And the way that we like represent ourselves to therapists can be misleading and not helpful. I also think like television hasn't done any favors for us because like we have these ideas of what therapy is and then we go into that trying to like play Meredith Grey in their in a therapy session as opposed to like playing ourselves you know um, I think what works for therapy it seems like what actually works for therapy is like saying the horrible thing again is like pressing on the pain point and then having someone the reason why like you want a therapist there yes maybe they can point out some things that like you haven't noticed yourself but not all therapists do that and that's really frustrating um because some therapists are like you have to figure it out for yourself um and you do kind of but also hi guide me in this i'm paying you for it um what helps is if you have someone there who like truly, truly, truly is not judgmental, it like makes the thing that you just said okay. And so it neutralizes it, right? But you can actually, you can do that for yourself. And a friend can do that too. <laughs> I'll be your therapist. This is the other thing. Like, I don't think you have to go to school for it. I don't think you need a PhD to be a therapist because I think a lot of therapists are probably messed up. I think you need to be someone who is like not triggered basically, who is like accepting and non-judgmental and like non-biased and, um, and like an authentic person too. Like people just try to go with, I don't know. I don't know. We have so many preconceived notions of, th of therapists. It's not helpful. It's not helpful. It's like in a negotiation or no, not, well, probably a negotiation. I'm thinking more of like in a, what is it? In a like, like a cop interview, you know, like good cop, bad cop. Um, it's not how it is on TV. Usually they're like, they try to dress like you and they don't sit across from you on a table. Usually it's just like in some random office. It's not in like a dark cement room. It's just like someplace normal and they usually like sit beside you. Like they try to like ally themselves to you. They try to get them, they're trying to get the other person to like feel safe around them, right? So like that's, that's the best way to gain like you just want to get the person to trust you and you want to get the person to open up so that they can like let go, like just <sighs> confess like in that way, you know? So I just feel like there's all these like, you're like creating this thing with therapy that it doesn't need to be. I think it just gets in the way. Yeah, you, you just have to like engage with the human being. It's so frustrating when someone's just like not being a person with you and you're like, what, what is this? What do you want me to say? You feel like you're in some like torture device and you're like, I'm trying to get unstuck and I'm, but I feel like I'm doing, I'm doing all the work. What are you even here for? Why am I doing this? And it's like, you're taking your medicine, but like, 
I don't know. It's very weird. It's very weird. Okay, I'm probably gonna go soon. Um, like in the next few minutes. Um, if any of you have any ideas for uh, subjects or like content or things you might want me to create a video about or talk about or share about or any of that, I would love your insights and your suggestions. Listening in y'all's the most important thing about listening. Um, I don't know. I think like we're always We're always seeing things and hearing things from our perspectives, our minds, like our paradigm. Um, and I don't know if we can get away from that. Like we see the person we're listening to in a certain way, we just do. Because we have history with them or we have biases. I think it's probably more important like if we're not um, defending ourselves like I think that allows for the best kind of listening is if we're like not at threat with anything they say then we can actually listen so that's what comes to mind for me therapist how do you yeah I know no that's what it is and I think most people don't know what they're doing there's just like no guidance. And again, it's like people think therapy is spilling your guts. It's not. You don't have to say everything and you don't, you don't have to. It's not this like, it's not a confessional. It's not because you're just like, you don't have to do everything and you don't have to accomplish everything. Um, but if there's things that bother you, there's probably judgment around it of some kind. That's all, like, I think that's most of what therapy is, <laughs> is you just have like resistance around things and you're just trying to neutralize it. Yes, I'm gonna write, yeah. Oh, that's an interesting idea, okay. That like, I would, I would share what I'm putting out. I don't know if I need to do a whole video. I don't know. Um, yeah, I want to do a blog um, and just write more. I'm also writing a book. I think it's going to be a book. And uh, maybe some other things too. Like I said, maybe some things about acting. Okay. I need to go actually eat something. But this has been so nice. Thank you everyone for coming on and being here with me. I'll be doing this weekly again. And um, yeah, if you wanna get in touch with me before then, like, so I'll probably do this on, Saturdays are probably a good day for me, for everyone. Um, but yeah, if you wanna get in touch with me before then, you know, message me. It seems like you guys know how to find me. It's good to see you, Casey. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I love you so, 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 so much. And I really do. I just want to say, like, I was very, very touched that during my break, like, some of you just reached out and were, like, concerned for me. I didn't expect that. And, um... Yeah, I really, really appreciate you. <laughs> My favorite recipes? I should do that. Okay. Thank you. I love you. 
Okay. Have the most beautiful day, guys. Okay. Bye.